everyone, I'm Sarah and this is my channel, So Sarah Sewed. It's been a little while since I have made a video, so I apologize if you have been waiting. I also apologize for the sound of my voice today. Um, I attended my sister's 40th birthday last night. She had a dinner and it was fantastic, but I think I talked quite a bit over the sounds of other people talking because my voice sounds pretty tired today. It doesn't feel its best, but I'll do my best to talk to you um, through my makes from the last few months. I think the last time I made a video, um, I, was, I shared some makes uh, from maybe June and July. And so now I've got my makes from August, September, October to share with you. There aren't actually that many um, because I did a lot of knitting over that time and I'm going to keep my knitting for another video this time. Um, but I do have a few things to share with you. So I hope you'll stick around. Before I get into my makes, I'll just let you know quickly what I'm wearing today. This is a t-shirt I wear all the time. It's a, a pattern called the Galaxy Tee by Pattern Scissors Cloth. It used to be a free pattern. When I got it, it was a free pattern. Um, now it's $10 to buy it, um, but it's a really great pattern. What I really love about it is that it's got these um, sort of puffy little sleeves, which look different depending on the fabric that you choose. I've made this one in a linen jersey that I got from my design. So I think it's 100% linen, really nice and comfortable. I wear this to work quite a bit. Um, I'll stand up and show you a bit better. So let's get on to the makes. I've already mentioned the party I went to last night, so why don't I begin with what I wore to the party? So back in April, when it was my birthday, my sisters gave me a voucher for Nerida Hansen because they know I love the fabrics from there so much. So I didn't use the voucher immediately. I wanted to wait and really want the fabric that I ordered in the end. And I also do like to wait out for um, really good deals. Um, recently, Nerida Hansen have gone through a whole um, change of their sort of business um, model. And things are changing, I believe, to a print on demand kind of service. It's not ready yet in Australia, but for the last few months, they've been selling everything um, every all of their last stock at heavily reduced prices. So, and I have actually found for the last few years they often have really big sales. So I tried where I could to avoid ever buying from them unless it was really half price pretty much because they are so often were selling things half price. So, so I did get this particular fabric at a really good price. It, it's a mid-weight cotton and the design is by a Melbourne artist called Sarah Rowe. Um, but her sort of business name is Miss Moresby and yeah, I'll show you the fabric. I think all of her fabrics are very sort of playful. There's a lot of really bold and bright colors in them. And actually when this one arrived, I was a little bit worried about how bold it was. I thought, oh, is this going to look crazy? Am I going to look just a little bit too out there in this pattern? But I decided to use it anyway. And what I used it for is the Laura dress by True Bias. Now, this is a dress that really caught my attention when I saw Sandeep from Sandeep Beep on Instagram. She made, She's made three versions now. And when I saw her first one, I just loved the shape um, and thought it looked beautiful. And I thought it could um, hopefully suit my body shape as well. The pattern comes in a couple of different views. There's a sleeveless version with just thin shoulder straps, and there are also um, sleeves as an option, big voluminous wrist length sleeves. And, and there are two lengths available as well, one quite long and one around the knees. Um, what Sandeep did and what I really liked and decided to do as well was actually to um, shorten the sleeves. So I still wanted sleeves, but I didn't want great big long ones. So um, I've made little short puff sleeves, so I will show you my dress. So as you can see, it's quite a, um, a plunging neckline and these big sleeves, it's got some gathering underneath the bust for shaping there. And then um, it falls from kind of an empire line, quite fitted, but not too tight, um, down to your desired length. It's done up with buttons all the way down. They're shank buttons. And then there's little rouleau loops that you have to make yourself to be able to do it up. The whole so thing the whole was quite difficult to try on throughout the making process because there aren't separate shoulder um, pieces. The shoulders are part, the sleeves make the shoulder straps as well. So you can't really feel 
how it's fitting until you've got the sleeves on and the elastic in the sleeves. Um, and then the buttons are almost one of the last things you do as well. And so I wasn't really sure how it was going to fit, but I'm really, really happy with the final result. The I am going to go back and take a little bit more elastic out of the shop. So there's a casing on the shoulder in the sleeve for some elastic. And I, I did find last night I was often sort of pulling the elastic back. It was sort of feeling like it was falling off my shoulders a little bit. So I'll go back and I'll fix that. That will be a really easy fix. Um, but apart from that, I'm very, very happy with the fit. I thought the instructions were excellent, really, really clear. I thought all the pattern pieces were really well marked. Everything came together really easily. Um, there's also a sew along on their blog just with pictures and detailed um, instructions, but there's also a um, video sew along on YouTube, which I didn't actually discover until about halfway through um, my making process. Um, but that was great. Once I discovered that, that was really nice to have um, just to check I was on the right track with all my little steps and understanding the instructions well. Um, so that was really helpful. There was one part of this dress construction process that I really disliked and found very stressful, and that was making the button loops. So it's a really, really, really thin, basically like a, a long strap that you have to make. And I just, I just cannot turn a small strap. I can't do it. <laughs> when I've got other things that I'm making that have, you know, a, um, for example, a drawstring or things like that, I, d I just tend to use the sort of bias binding method. I just fold it in and then and sew it together. But I think that would have made my loops a bit too chunky. So I didn't want to do that, but I just could not get this loop to turn. Um, yeah, and I was finding it very stressful. So I decided rather than keep trying and and get more and more stressed and spend more and more time, I would buy some ribbon instead and I would use that rather than continue to try and make matching ruler loops. I'm not sure what I would do next time. I might try and buy a loop turner that's got the little um, grabby bit at the end that you put, I don't know. So yeah. That was the one part of the dress that I found stressful and not enjoyable. The rest of it was really, really fun. And, um, but the main thing is I love the final product. So yeah, I felt great in this dress. I had lots of compliments uh, and I'm looking forward to wearing it again. This dress comes in quite a large size range from zero to 32. You can choose to buy either the zero to 18 version or the 14 to 32 sizes. I made a size 12 in the Laura dress, which aligned pretty well with my measurements, and I'm really happy with the fit. The next two items I'm going to share are both by the same designer, Melody from Soften Studio. Now, Melody had a pattern called the Aura Pinafore, which she took off, um, it wasn't available for purchase anymore, I think from the end of last year or something like that. And then she announced earlier this year that um, until the end of April, I think, March or April, it was going to be back online. You could buy it. Um, and so I did. Actually, since then, it's never come down. I don't think. I'm pretty sure it's still available for purchase. But, but yes, I bought it earlier in the year when I thought it was going to only be online very shortly. And But I didn't make it until the last couple of months. I've had some beautiful blue corduroy in my stash for, I think, around two years. And I think I bought it with the intention to make some pants. I have a couple of Helen's Closet York pinafores in cord that I wear to work all the time. I find them so comfortable. I love layering them over different tops. Um, I love that there's no waist seam. I'm just really comfortable in them. And I thought um, having a corduroy long pinafore could be handy. So I decided to use the cord that I had to make the Aura pinafore. This is a really, really long dress. So um, I actually shortened mine by six inches. Melody from Soften Studio has a video on her YouTube about how to length, um, how to how to shorten the pattern because then you also have to make your own facings. You have to make new pattern pieces for the facings so that they fit as well. So it's a bit of a process, but um, it all worked out really well. Um, it's a very A line silhouette this pinafore and Melody's instructions include how to um, shorten it without losing that a-line effect 
I decided to just shorten it from the bottom hem because it was still going to be an A-line shape. And I'd seen some people say um, that that would help them to not be overwhelmed by too much volume. So being 160 centimeters tall, I decided that um, that would probably be a good idea for me as well. I didn't need all that extra volume. And especially because I was making it in this heavy fabric. Um, so, so here is my Aura Pinafore. You can see that there are facings in the bodice. Now I didn't want to use the same fabric because it just would have been too heavy. So I just bought a, a cotton drill from Spotlight. So there's facings um, at the bodice and there's also facings at the hem, same thing. And then I also used that same fabric for my pocket lining. Honestly, I've had so much wear out of this. It surprised me how often I wear it. It has taken over my Aura pinafores as my pinafore. It's taken over my York pinafores as my pinafore of choice. Um, I love the length. I love having that extra volume and warmth. Um, yeah, and I love the shape. I find, so it's quite a plunging one. It's not one that you could wear. Well, I don't think I wouldn't, I wouldn't wear it without something underneath. Um, and it's also quite a little bit gapy, um, on the sides, probably because my measurements put me sort of somewhere between a 12 and a 14, but I, I decided to make the size 14. So I'm not sure if I made if I'd made the size 12, if it, there'd be a little bit less room on the sides. Um, but I find my favorite way to wear it is with a like a a, a high top. So um, I have a Freya top by Tilly and the Buttons that basically every time I wear it, I've I've been wearing it with that. So I'd like to make um maybe another um, Freya top, maybe a different top that will go under this um, just for a bit more variety when I'm wearing that. Um, but yeah, absolutely love it. And I've got another one cut out in a, um, a lighter fabric. So I'll hopefully show you that in my next makes video, whenever that ends up being. Someone asked me on Instagram if it was heavy to wear. Honestly, it doesn't feel, I don't feel like it's weighing me down or anything like that. The weight that it gives is a very comfortable weight. It's more of a feeling of warmth and, um, yeah, it's very comfortable. Um, the main time I really noticed that it's quite a heavy pinafore is finding an appropriate hanger in my wardrobe to hang it from. Um, yeah, so I would highly recommend this pattern. The only problem with it is it doesn't have very, um, there's, it comes in limited sizing. So I think because the pattern pieces are so big, um, maybe that's what's limited the, designer's ability to make it into more um sizes but this, um, yeah but this one was only available from a size 6 to 18. i made the 14 so only two sizes um available above the one i made so yeah quite limited sizing but if you do fit within that size range um it's one i would recommend if you watched my latest video you will have seen um what i made and wore on a cruise ship holiday and my most I think one of my favorite things that I made and wore and what I found most um, practical and versatile were my bias cut skirts. I made two linen bias cut skirts. They're the Clo bias skirt, again by Soften Studio. Um, loved making them, loved wearing them, uh, and I decided to make another one. Now this one I decided, you know, looking at my wardrobe and where the sort of gaps were in the wintry months, I really wanted to have, I feel like I've got a lot of tops, I've got a lot of pinafores, but I've also been making a lot of jumpers, knitting them, and I never know what to wear them with. I don't have very many comfortable work appropriate pants, um, and I didn't have a lot of wintry skirts either. The The linen skirts that I made for the cruise ship holiday are quite thin, um, yeah, and not really, they wouldn't be warm enough. For winter weather. So, so I decided to make another Clo bias skirt um, and one that I can layer with boots and with tights and with my knitted jumpers on top. So this is the fabric that I bought. Um, I bought this one from my design. It's a viscose lawn and I chose it. I just love the I just love the colors so much and I thought there's so many colors in there that will work with the things that I've made. So I've got a dusty pink um, mohair jumper 
that goes really nicely with it. That's what I've worn it with so far. Um, it's got a black background, so it's really easy to layer with tights, but there's lots of other colors in there as well. Um, and I think it's a sort of skirt that will, I can wear it all year really, because I can layer it with the tights and wear it with boots and things, but equally I could wear it. I mean, I think it would look nice with this t-shirt, for example. Um, so yeah, it's beautiful. This one I found quite quite a lot harder to sew up than the linen ones that I made. It was a really slippery fabric. Um, cutting it out, I have no idea how, well, cutting it out was really hard. I found, I thought I was cutting straight lines, but things must have been shifting and all the pieces, um, things were not lining up very well at all. So it worked out okay, but it was a little bit less enjoyable than the linen ones that I made. Um, the patterns got, so it's got an elastic waistband and a drawstring. So it's got an elastic waistband and a drawstring, but the pattern also says to do some lines of um, top stitching over the over the elastic waistband, which I really like on my linen versions. Um, looks good and it feels good. I tried on this, but it, it just, this fabric did not, it wasn't going well. Um, top stitching through, yeah, trying to, make it taut and top stitching. And it was just, I thought it was just better to leave it. It's fine without it. So, you know, I mean, I might have to sort of redistribute the gathers around the elastic sometimes because it's not held down with the stitching, but it's not a problem. And I felt like I was just gonna damage it by trying to stretch it out and stitch over the top of that, so. This one's got a slightly larger um, size range available than the Aura Pinafore, um, with the sizes from six up to 24 for this one. That's all the clothes I've sewn for myself over the last few months, but I also sewed a little present for my new baby niece. Um, she's six weeks tomorrow and extremely cute, but before she was born, I made a little cardigan for her and a matching beanie out of scraps of French terry that I had in my remnant tubs. The fabric that I used was from Nerida Hansen and I believe it was a field day studio design. I used this French terry to make myself a sweater dress, which I absolutely love. And yeah, I had plenty of it left to make this little cardigan. The so cardigan that I made is called the Papa cardigan. It's in the Baby Basics range by Tada Patterns. And this one comes from five zero up to three years old sizing. I think I made the zero to three months. I might have made three to six months. Can't remember. Um, but I just, I know that she'll wear it when it fits her. So um, I can't wait to see it on her. The little beanie pattern is also by Tada Patterns and that was free. So I thought that was a nice little set to give to my sister um, before her baby came along. Uh, it's a really lovely pattern. I've made a few of the Baby Basics patterns by Tada before. Um, it was quite simple. I mean, the hardest thing about sewing up something so small is just the fact that they're so small. So doing uh, attaching the, the cuffs to the sleeves, for example, that's so tiny and um, getting into those spaces is a little bit tricky. Um, but the instructions were great and yeah i used ribbing that i also had in my stash it's just a spotlight ribbing um it was a bit stretchy so when i did the buttonholes it got a little bit warped but i think it's fine and i think the buttons were just from spotlight as well uh but yeah i'm really happy with it and as i said i'm really looking forward to seeing my little new niece daphne wearing this outfit so speaking of baby gifts i also sewed a quilt and I gave this one also to my sister. Now, if you've been watching me this year, you might remember that I was participating in a sew along for a quilt called the Charade Quilt by Jittery Wings. I started it back in March, um, spent hours on it in March and April, and then it came to a standstill because I just couldn't figure out how I was going to place all my blocks. So the idea behind the pattern is it's kind of a color placement experiment, really. So you're learning how to use different colors and then put them all in place for a particular look. Um, and I, I tried so many times. I had 
I had four different colors in mind, sort of green, yellow, dark pink, and light pink. And every time I placed them out, I just was not 100% happy with the placement. And so I kept putting it away and thinking, I'll think about it another time. But then every time I would try again, it was, you know, it would take a couple of hours every time you would get them out and have a look and read position them and it was yeah it was just and it's one of those things you spend so long making a quilt from the cutting you know the whole the whole thing they take so long and I thought well I'm, I don't want to be I, I want to be really really happy with it I don't want to get to the end and be like nah, it's okay so in the end, rather than making one large quilt with the four different colors, I decided to turn the quilt into a double-sided baby quilt because all the colors are quite pastel-y and I thought it would, um, yeah, I thought it would make a beautiful uh, quilt for, again, for my new niece. So I made one side that's all got the pinks and then one side that's got all the greens and yellows. And I am so happy with how this turned out. I think it was the perfect decision. Um, yeah, so my sister can decide which side she wants on display um, at any given day. And um, yeah, I, it worked out really well. The hard thing about it was generally when you're making a quilt, for people who haven't made quilts before, you'll have a quilt top and then you have your batting um, and then you have your quilt back and you make your quilt back bigger and then you're batting bigger and then you can lay your quilt top over the top and then you know, then you can trim it at the end. But because my back and front were exactly the same size, I had to make them line up when I was doing the quilt sandwich, putting them together. So that was tricky. So what I did was, I, you know, things that you would not usually do. So I put out my back, I put out one of the sides and then I, um, I used spray basting. So I sprayed the glue onto that side. I put the batting down, um, and then I trimmed it. I trimmed it exactly to, um, I trimmed the batting to the size of the quilt. And then I just had to line up the, the front exactly in line again because they were the same size. And it worked. So I was happy with that. And then I just did very simple straight line. Well, not straight, deliberately kind of wonky <laughs> um, lines all the way just vertically down the quilt. And then I pieced my own binding out of two complementary colors um, that I thought worked with the with the quilt. And yeah, absolutely love it. Was thrilled to give it to my sister. Um, and she and her husband and her, um, her three-year-old daughter were all very excited to get it. So I'll pop some pictures in of them modeling it before the new baby arrived. I've made one more thing recently, well actually two of the same thing recently. So it was my mum's birthday in October and I made her a knitting bag. Now actually I made her a knitting bag for Christmas last year and but I just made a small one. So the pattern that I used is called the Hebe, I think, H-E-B-E, -E, the Hebe um, tote bag by Lazenby Co. Um, and it's a really fantastic bag because it's drawstring it's got lots of pockets on the inside that you can customize make the size that you want um and yeah it, the instructions on these patterns give you such a professional finish everything everything is really really beautifully finished there's not a single you know raw seam to be seen um everything's enclosed uh it's they're just very the, the attention to detail is amazing so it's a beautiful gift if you're thinking about um, making something for someone for christmas i would highly recommend this pattern so i made my mum the small one last year um and i had noticed she used it all the time but it was kind of bursting <laughs> full of stuff and i thought well it looks like she could use another one but this time i'll make her the big one so the big one's quite a bit bigger um, I found in my stash some beautiful wash linen that I'd bought from um, my design. It was my, one of my first purchases, actually. I made myself some Pietra pants with it um, back in 2020, but I had a, a fair amount left, enough to make that the, the outer fabric of this bag. And then I found a piece of fabric that I could use as the lining, again, just in my stash, um, just a, a cotton from Spotlight. 
Um, yeah, and I put this bag together. It was like a little long weekend project at the end of September. And yeah, she loves it. So I was really pleased with that. And as I was looking for scraps for her bag, I kept finding other options and I found um, enough to make myself one as well. I love knitting. So I got into knitting a couple of years ago and um, for a little while, I was one of those people who would only have one project at a time. It's like, I, you know, they take a long time anyway. So one project at a time is enough. But recently I've had more than one on the go because I find sometimes I'm in the mood for a particular type of knitting and not another. So I actually have three knitting projects on the go at the moment. So um, I found I needed my own third knitting bag myself. So I made one for me. So that's good. I can actually show you mine. So mine I made just with a soft pink linen, just a spotlight linen that I had um, in my stash. And then I lined mine and did the drawstrings with this Rifle Paper Company um, quilting cotton. So I received a voucher for my birthday a few years ago from some work friends for Rifle Paper Company because they know how much I love their designs. And I bought a couple of um, uh, pieces of quilting cotton, including this one. And I made myself a blouse with this pattern, with this uh, with this fabric, but I had enough left over to be the lining of this bag. So you can see, yeah, it's got the drawstring in that, and it's also got one side of the straps in that. And then when you open it up, as I said, there's heaps of room, but there's also all these pockets. You can decide how big you want them and you can sew, you know, you can sew them however however many of them you want and make them all different sizes. So I've got some needles in that one and got some balls of wool in the other. I think I think the pattern says this one will hold I think it said it will hold 20 skeins. Might have been 12. Might have been 16. Whatever it is, it does hold a lot. You can see that. So I've got a shawl project in there and quite a few skeins in there at the moment. One of the nice things about it is that there's no, there's nothing for your knitting to get caught on. So I do have another knitting bag. Um, it's got a couple of zips in there though. So sometimes things can get caught. I'm worried about things getting snagged, but yeah, there's never that problem with this one. So I'm really happy with it. I'm really happy that my mum was so happy with hers and, um, I mean, obviously you could use it for anything. So your, if you were to make it for yourself or someone else, you wouldn't have to put your knitting in there. Um, really anything, anything you can think of. And I think that is everything I've sewn since I last spoke to you. I do have two jumpers I've finished knitting, but as I said, I'll, I'll share those in a separate video. Um, but yeah, I'm, ex I'm excited to be back sewing again and sharing again. And I, again, I apologize. It's taken me so long to get on and do it. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching today. And I will look forward to seeing you in my next video. Bye-bye.